And then I'll mark this as an announcement. Yay. Come All on. Right. <laughs> come on, come on. Saying that we're up. Come on. Do you think our energy gets too high and it just goes, <laughs> I'm telling you, it is crazy. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to remove announcement and then I'll put this as our new announcement. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is us. We're now at the announcement. I'm going to put up here. We're live. We're back. We are back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, sorry about that. Okay. But anyway, I just, I think this is important, Candace, because one thing that's been happening to me big time has been every minute that I've stepped out, I get attacked. Like this past week, I've had like horrible vomiting. The dogs have been sick. I got a one-star review on my book. Like all, like all sorts of stuff. I lost my insurance, you know, all of this stuff. I'm like, there's like huge attacks going on, which makes me excited because it means we're doing something juicy, you know? <laughs> but like, will you talk about a little bit about that happening to you in your life? Like, how do you deal with that? What, what kind of recommendations do you have for people? I guess, I mean, I am, I, I will say on that topic, like I, I have not had as many uh, troubling experiences. And I don't know if that's like a light warrior thing that we're, maybe I just don't even notice <laughs> barreling through it. Um, you know, I think the one, the one time that I had experience with when I was in Sedona working with you on the shamanic training and yeah. was, was kind of told that I've been carrying around, uh, an entity, um, and a dark entity that had, and I, I can really relate to when it probably came into my life when I was traveling in Guatemala and that, that it was, um, it was related to some work that I had been doing um, there with cacao and things like that. Um, Did you but, like encounter like in dark energy or something in a ceremony? I slept uh, in there. So I was on a retreat in Guatemala and there were two ceremonial spaces. One of them was like you had to walk like an hour up through the jungle to get to this place. And one of the main uh, yoga ceremony spaces was under a really dark waterfall deep in the jungle. And they had me sleep. They thought this would be really, really nice for me. Let's just say it would be nice when it was warm weather, but it was in the middle of the rainy season in the jungle. I was open air in this dark space where everything rose up. And so, cause I've really reflected on it since I saw you. And because they were, you know, um, when I went to have the entity removed, they were like, oh, this is tied to this. And this has kind of been with you. And, um, and I think it was being in a space that had not been cleared that had, and I think that's what we talk about a lot going into spaces. What I learned from, from that experience, cause I'd been carrying this entity around with me and I didn't know it. And remember it was kind of like other people saw it and you have to, you have to want right. to know who to trust. Right. Right. Who, Cause you know, there's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of snake oil salesmen out there too. Like, Oh, you have an entity, come pay me $500 and let's exactly. take it off of you. Right. Um, but I, I, I think that was the key thing I learned Rainy was I had to tune into it, be like, okay, but it took me a while even to figure out where it was from to trust, like, all right, I need to have this taken out. But what it has really taught me to do is to prepare rooms I go into now, because I travel a lot, making sure that I smudge, I bring clearing crystals. I set a grid on my bed every single morning now, like, so I, I set it up. Look at that, such a big piece of information at our shamanic training, yeah. huge. Like, if you're not doing that, you're watching this right now. Wake up in the morning and do a grid on your bed. It's yeah. where you it's where you go in. It's like you transition into other realms. It's a, like I'm like, how have I not been doing this? Right. And just I holding that. that space. Like, and it's funny, I put books, I put your macro diverse. I, put, oh. I, have, a, I have a bodhisattva book. Like I put things at my head that I want to seek in. <laughs> oh. I'm like, oh, I want to get in there. But totally. you know, and I think it's those things, like that's what I've learned. In terms of like people, you know. <sighs> I, I think right now, and I, I know Laura's, if Laura's on here or Beth, what I'm finding is, is that the, the, the attacks that I see most are from people who do not want to share. 
And that's, that time is over. This is about, and we speak about this a lot, um, like a group of women and I got together who were doing this. This is the time, as you've said, for the soul family to gather, to find, to, to respect and honor each other's tools, all yep. of our goodness to sit. We like to call it sitting at the round table. Everybody comes. Everybody sits at the round table together and shines their light. It doesn't matter if you've been doing it for one month. You are just as <laughs> elevated. You're just tapping into it, you know? Yep. And so getting that, and I think the only attacks I feel are from people who don't want to share, like who are like, I want to keep my little thing here, and you're threatening that. So it's fear-based. But um, You're you know, getting think- a man out there. <laughs> amen. <laughs> amen sister keep preaching like it like it <laughs> but i mean do you feel like i mean what i'm kind of shocked about is like how can something stay attached with all of that sound healing it's like you think like boom you do that it would be off does it just come right back or something you know like well, I mean, and I have to say, we'd have to talk to like an entity specialist because right, right. for me, I mean, this, you know, this was my first experience. I'm like, what the hell do you I like, like, what? Like, what do I have wrong with me? <laughs> but, I mean, I have to say, I feel very cleared, but I now take a lot of extra precautions. I have a lot of ceremony in my home and, um, you know, so... I, it is it is constantly being cleared and windows open and 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 I'm constantly clearing myself. Do you have that special selenite sword? Will you show everyone that because that I think is a really powerful tool. Yeah, that's amazing. Oh, so badass! Is uh, yes, <laughs> I was like, oh. this, this is so badass. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, and it's like I, I like people come in and they must be like, who is this weird girl? <laughs> like, Right? My dad came in the other day. He's like, what do you do? <laughs> Don't I'm, like, I'm like, it's not what you think. Um, <laughs> but this, you know, <laughs> I, with this, I um, in particular, I was really struggling um, with having a lot of dreams with my ex-husband this summer. And like constantly, constant presence. Nightmare kind of things? Uh, yeah, like just really couldn't get like I was like, it's time. This is like so long ago. I'm like, we need to move on here. And with then and then understanding the entities. And so the shaman that we worked with, um, you know, that we trained with. So really learning how to use this, you know, to clear the auric field. Selenite is such an amazing, has so many amazing properties, you know, to clear the auric field, to get back into flow. And now I, I use it like if, if feeling the need to kind of cut cords and letting go. And so just a real powerful tool to keep me clean. And then also to allow people in my ceremonies also kind of feel called to like, give it to them. It's a very, it's a very empowering crystal as well. So you just yeah. kind of feel, you feel, you definitely feel like a light warrior. when you oh, no, It's like an absolute must for light warrior. <laughs> yeah. You got to get your, get your solenoid. It seems so powerful when you're like, I'm cutting the cord. You're like, the wow, that would work. <clears throat> It's pretty yeah. awesome. <laughs> it is very awesome. Okay, so besides that, um, just could give us a few more little things that you do, like you wear crystals and yeah. So I'm okay. So I made that transformation. You know, stockbroker. It started with a Kundalini yoga class, um, and that was really the first time that I like sat down. Like, I, you, you know, we like, tell people what Kundalini yoga is, just in case they don't know. Of course, yeah. So I, it was. I, I'll tell you. Can I tell them just quickly how I got yeah. made that transition? So yeah. when I was when I was working as a broker, you know, I I have to say I did know something was missing. I was very successful at what I did, but there was like I knew there was some part of my spirituality. There was just something that that really was missing. And I knew like, like, I didn't want to have children. I felt like, oh my gosh, there's gotta be, I know there's something I'm supposed to be doing, but I have no idea what it is. And this isn't it, even though it's, it, you know, it's, right. it's good. Yeah. Right. And so when, uh, but I started to get these really horrible back pains, back and neck pains, like, you know, I didn't understand at that point the dis-ease, right? And, right. Um, <laughs> and how it all gets stuck in there. And so I ended up going to like every doctor and everything and they, they couldn't figure it out. And I was like in tears and somebody said, you've got to go see this energy healer from Sri Lanka. And I went to go see him and I was in tears. Like I was just like, oh my God, like my body was just kind of giving out on me. 
and he did this, you know, he tapped all around me, right? And he's just like, you know, and I'm like, what the hell is he doing? You're like, and, tap. Right? Yeah. I'm like, what, what's going on? And he just looks at me. And I have to say, at this point, you know, don't, well, you can judge all you want. I was like smoking like at least a pack a day. Like, I was like, you know, I mean, I was, I was doing all kinds of stuff. That, but you're you a light know, warrior. I mean, I, it's, how, it's your thing. So it was, it was. So he was just like, oh my God. He's like, there's nothing wrong with your back. He's like, so you need to stop drinking for a month because your liver needs is like needs a breath and your lungs need a breath because you haven't taken a breath like deeper than here. And he's like, you need to go to Kundalini yoga. Now I'd been to yoga and hated it. Like I was like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> like this is it's slow and I got it and, like, and I went to this kundalini yoga class for those of you who have not been it is the most wild wacky fun stuff you can ever imagine <laughs> and, and if you like if you're just like a normal like blue collar like, or, or, like blue suit navy go going to the office in your pinstripes wake I mean kundalini yoga you're just like, like hello you around <laughs> I totally. it's like you know the postures are wild and you do them forever and it's um it's mentally challenging physically you're chanting I mean I I, I did I'm like what you know and then they play the gong at the end and I'm like what and what is I, going walked on? Out, I walked down to this thing and I felt so good I mean I'm in the middle of London I want to hug everybody I, it was like, it was that moment. It was yeah. like, I felt connected spiritually. I felt I had a roll wake. That was it. I mean, it was like, literally like, oh, okay. And I kept coming back and I started to feel so good. And then I wanted to know why I felt so good. So, you know, the, my Sri Lankan friend, Sam was like, so you should become a teacher trainer. I'm like, I work like 60, 70 hours a week. He's like, You'll find a way. <laughs> and, you know, I'm in teacher training. And then he's like, you got to teach on the weekends. I'm like, okay. But Kundalini, sorry, if I answer your question, no, that's such a long way around it. I get all excited. I know, um, I'm exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Kundalini yoga is like um, mind, body, spirit. So the combination of breath work, so our prana with physical movement to kind of get the energy shifting in the body. And then we use the bandhas, so your locks, and it's all meant to activate the Shakti energy that is in everyone. So second and third vertebrae, we've all got it. And basically, if you think when you're born into this physical body, you are in flow and you're I'll open up at the 10th chakra is open and we get blocked up, mental, physical, you know, emotional traumas. And Kundalini helps to get that back into flow. Then you add in all these beautiful instruments and that helps too. And then you throw plant medicine in and it's like the next beautiful level triumphant. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I know it's like the heart. I don't know. It's like the pyramid and the heart. Right. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, well, and I mean, speaking of that, do you want to jump into that a little bit? Sure. Because I mean, your cacao ceremony. Well, and I think it's, it's a really nice segue after um, yesterday's interview. For those of you who caught it and heard Trayvon talking about like, Getting in touch with the the energy of the plant that you're ingesting, you know, getting in touch with its frequency, its geometry, its message, what it's communicating. It's like so many levels of things beyond what, you know, so many people think of. When, so tell us about that. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I incorporate ceremonial cacao. I trained with a shaman as a cacaoista, and um, she's someone who had spent a lot of, she was one of the first people to be in, um, really down in, in the Amazon 20 years ago, learning about ayahuasca, growing her own vines with a shaman. She was one of the first Western women um, and one of the first people to start bringing people down to do ayahuasca journeys. But the last journey to the last um, kind of sit she had with grandmother, and this was probably about 20 years, well, maybe 15 years ago, and the plant ayahuasca told her that the West wasn't ready for it yet. And she needed to instead bring cacao to the West, bring people to the Aya. Because uh -huh. she, they felt it still needed to be managed at that, like in the proper indigenous with the shamans in the ancient traditional ways. But cacao, you could, because also, I mean, let's just be really honest. Taking someone out of their normal work without putting them on a dieta, without letting them know how to integrate ayahuasca is a massive experience to have if you're not, you need to, you need to be prepared. And it's almost like going there, you are kind of 
it almost forces that contemplation, that time and preparation that okay. I think a lot of people, you know, I was seeing it in London when I left, we're just going away for a weekend, coming back and they've had this mind blowing connection to source, but they don't have any idea what to do with it. So cacao is a plant medicine. One thing that's so cool is you've, it's, it's gentle. She's mm -hmm. mother's your eye, right? She's like the little sweet goddess and the Mayans and the Aztecs used her um, at first for currency, she was so, you know, uh, they, they put so much weight and our wealth our, yeah. into backing her, but she was used to open up the heart. Um, and phys physiologically, I can say that she, you know, cacao does, it, you know, increases blood flow to the brain, serotonin and dopamine, like you, it's feel good. But what we're really doing is we're inviting the feminine spirit this goddess, this goddess of cacao to come into our being, to vibrate in our cells as a plant medicine, to open our hearts and release negativity. That's why she's good for the West right now, because wow. grandma can take her like your, you know, your, your neighbor, everybody can drink cacao and yeah. have this uplifting initial heart opening experience. It's yeah. like baby steps raining, you know, like it's, it's like everybody can have her, you know? Yeah. It's, it's a safe, joyous thing for everyone to do. And it gets you connected with that energy of the plant, which you need probably to take that next step or the future step of doing ayahuasca. Right. Well, yeah, I just feel like it's a great way to start to initiate your connection to your connection to a plant. You're, you know, I, right. when I drink my cacao. I'm usually like, walking outside, sitting on my, like going, okay, I'm in nature. Let's connect with this vibration. You know, and it's even like, it's how you prepare it ceremonially, drinking it with intention. And, and then obviously you, getting, I just want to interrupt you. Like, would please. you tell, tell, tell some of the viewers your, how you prepare it? Because it's so beautiful. Like, Right. I mean, it's just like I got to experience it, but for those people who haven't yet experienced it, just give a little more detail. Okay. So I, oh, oh, I didn't, you know, actually I'm a block. That's funny. I'm like, I'm like, I just had ceremony. So I've got like everything all around me. So <laughs> I, I actually use Keith's cacao, which is funny because it's such a gringo name. I know that. Um, but Keith is actually, they call him the chocolate shaman. Like if you go online, like he's been doing this a really long time, you know, and he <laughs> felt called to go to the jungle in Guatemala and hand pick the trees and the farms and the people that have like the trees that have the highest vibration with those old uh, Criollo beans that have never been genetically modified. Like, you know, they're handpicked with intention. And so it's an amazing process. But when you take ceremonial cacao, because let me just say the health benefits are awesome for cacao. So you can go to Whole Foods and buy, if you just want to throw it in a smoothie, that's fine. This cacao like never goes above the boiling point. Like when I, you know, I chop it up, um, and then I, you know, I, I bring it to like, there's like a special, bring it to almost boil and add okay. like, you know, your, your special little cayenne. I add cayenne and maple syrup mm -hmm. and a little cloves, but you're really, you're stirring it and you're making sure that you're just like, I sing to it. So I sing Icarus to oh. it. <laughs> and I sing love into it and ask that everyone who partakes in it, you know, gets, receives wisdom from the goddess and. Oh you know, that their heart is open. Oh. So it's, um, and, and it's sharing that with people that it's, you know, that's meant to be ceremonial. So when you work with ceremonial cacao and you're going to drink it, like I drink it almost daily for, you know, my meditation and for my practice, um, really taking the time to prepare it um, so that it's really, it's carrying that vibration, Rainy, is like super important. Well, Does that answer your question? It does. And I think that's important to note that you are like, you're tapping into the frequency of the water in it as well, that Ooh. sacred water, you know, and it's like that you singing to it creates the crystalline structure of your cacao that goes into the body and like is transformative. I mean, you could, it was such a, um, a beautiful experience, like going through your ceremony and, and experiencing the sound healing and then take, mm -hmm. taking it in and just feeling it go to all your cells, you know, powerful. Yeah. Well, and I think that's it. like you are able to experience when you use it. I think, I think one thing is important to note too, and kind of like what you've done here, this gathering is people, people miss their soul family. Like we used to really have a lot of more ways to come together. People are so spread out and, you know, there's been a lot of kind of institutional breakdowns, 
but to to come together and share something and to share a vibration together you know like all of us connecting and even though we're finding out like where we're from we all know we're really connected and right. i think i think with the cacao it's connecting you to mother earth so it's kind of making you aware on an environmental level but just uh, I think all of us tuning into ourselves and everything else energetically um, and honoring the energy and, you know, and the, the, the structure of the water, or the structure of the cacao and um, of the air, you know, so it kind of, it, it brings in that element of awareness. And um, I think then because when in, in the cacao ceremony in particular, you're bringing it into your body and then you get to ignite it with the vibrations of the bowls and the gongs, then it's like super cool, right? Okay. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay. So this is the perfect segue into your sound healing, because I mean, when you talk about your, your yoga, your cacao, and then the sound healing, sound healing for me, like the first time I ever had a sound healing was 2011. And I remember I thought, this was so much more powerful than any massage or anything I'd ever gotten. Like I really, I felt like I was in another place for hours afterwards, you know, it was just so powerful. So yeah, talk about that. Oh, and, and we have a question from one of our viewers and I'm sorry, I can't see who you are. It just says Facebook user, but it says I have raw cacao powder and don't know how to use it. I bought it a minute ago. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so I, the one thing I would say, just check. I'm always a little cautious about powder because to make powder, it has to usually be quite heavily manufactured and the cacao butter is drawn out, which means that it's been manufactured past the boiling level. And a lot of the real goodness, I'm, I'm not trying to be a downer on, on your powder. It might be secret. <laughs> you can email it to me and I'll have a look. But I'm, I'm usually like, you really, like if you're going to use it ceremonially, you usually want to be with a paste because then um, it, because basically it's taken the bean and then it's just really um, manufactured down into a paste, but everything is still in it from the actual bean. So I'd have to have a look at it. Um, it you know, if you email me, I promise I'll have a look. I'll be able to tell you. And even if, if it's not ceremonial, I'm sure it's like good nutrients, but it you usually the manufacturing process can tweak it a little bit. So you just want to be aware of that. Before you jump in, let Candace make sure it's good. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> jump ahead to, to the sound healing because that's like, I mean, sound healing, you know, and I'm sure people out in our audience um, have experienced sound healing, but there's some people who haven't. So just kind of tell us a little bit about why you why you were attracted to it in the first place. Absolutely. Hold on. I got to show you this too because I've got like so much cool stuff here. And I'm if like, you feel like all, doing something, I, please I know, I've like got all my bowls and bells. It's so funny. Actually, I guess you can't Yay! see it. But yeah. So I mean, I, I can hit them for you too. But I, um, yeah. so, all right. So the sound is, I think one of the reasons why the sound attracted me so much was this kind of type A really, you know, brain that wouldn't shush um same with kundalini just to say like meditating and kundalini yoga is not like sitting silently on a on a rock we use our hands we chant like there's mudras and it's wonderful for an active brain but then you want to talk about sound healing the the great thing about sound healing it drops you, you think um beta your beta you're currently all in your beta thinking mind right now theta meditative state it can take 22 hours meditating to get there like you know i mean some yeah. people can do it in two but it can take quite a long time to get into a deep you know a deep theta so what you want to do you know with the gong the gong can drop you there in 30 to 60 seconds so way faster than a pharmaceutical like it's an amazing impact on your on your own brain waves it also highlights the part of the brain that is your creative mind and shuts down the really that like lively cognitive like thinking mind so i think in a time and place in the world where we do so few things for ourselves where we do so few things where we just have to receive like if you get a free hour most people go to the gym or you know like they're still doing yeah and the sound allows you to stop it it forces a quietness and an integration it's why we use it for shavasana and kundalini too because we do all of the work then you lie down and you know when you're in shavasana you're usually thinking about what you have to do next you're not really you're kind of you got your list and you're like mm, okay i did my yoga now i gotta run and so we do shavasana before meditation so to keep everybody integrating all of the, the work that they did, 
we play the gong and then bring them into meditation. So mm -hmm. in a proper sound healing, you know, we've got this tool to quiet your mind. So you're in a position to receive, you're in a position to allow the vibrations to work their magic. And Rainy, there's such a cool, um, <clears throat> if people are interested, I can share it. A doctor in Australia took the blood of several people, uh, patients of his before and after a sound healing. And it was amazing. Like you see these kind of like tired, sluggish cells and in the blood afterwards, they're like all separate and dynamic. And they're all like, do, 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 do. You know, you're like, that's you're right. like, wow. You know? It's like, that just happened inside of me. Um, it's, it's, and the woman who taught me, she had been in a car accident and couldn't walk unaided she went to a two hour sound healing and was able, I'm not saying it's like, she wasn't like miraculously healed, but what it did to her inflammation and circulation, um, she was, you know, it, it has a significant impact phys uh, physically on the body. But I think as much it's what it does to quiet the mind and then energetically the work it does, another facet of helping us shift through stuck energy it's cool you know and i always say it in my recessions it's sound healing not sound fun like you're gonna get uncomfortable it might right. make you a little bit nervous at times and that's because you've got these tools washing energy over you and if you're stuck or bunged up anywhere you're gonna feel it you know yeah. and so it's inviting those sounds to to be another tool to help you get to where you need to go and that's back into flow it's really i mean it's an important tool for ascension you know, like it really is. I mean, would you want to play a little bit for us just so we could hear it? Yeah, absolutely. I think, I don't, I hope it comes across. I know, let's see what sounds. I think, usually I have to say, I think um, I'll play, usually the bowls do better than the gongs. So, uh, what, give me, give me a time, like two minutes? Sure, two minutes, perfect. All right, hold on. I think I'll do the bowls just because the gong doesn't tend to come through. I'll try and do the gong at the end just in case. Okay, we're all receiving. We're just receiving. Just close your eyes and receive. Yeah. Hold on. All right, sorry, that was not a good start because I don't have the base of my thing here. Hold on. All right, oh. so with that. I did kind of throw it on you. So but, oh, it's okay. <laughs> That's all right, don't, I'm ready. <laughs> We're always ready. Okay. <laughs> All right, we're going to try the gong. Yay! I love that we're sending this out to our whole, whole family. If it doesn't, just yell at me if you can't hear it.
few whales for you. I'm not, I know. It was like all the cosmic solutions out there. Did you hear the whale? I'm like, oh, she's I was just like, that's like, that's the whales for the cosmic situation. Thank you. <laughs> That is so powerful. I just feel like that rippling out to everybody. You know what I mean? Could you hear it? Was it okay? You could hear. Oh, good. You, I mean, it's not as powerful as in person, but you can get the sense. And I, I think that um, that we were giving some feedback from people that they're feeling it and it feels good. So you're sending out those positive waves to everybody. Good. How, so tell me a little bit about your um, Soul Fire Social, like what you do and what that's all about. Oh, thanks, Rini. Um, that's very nice to let me share that. So I, um, you know, I decided this kind of this pyramid that I had, this Kundalini is my base and the sound and the cacao. So what I try and do um, is I offer almost everything I offer is donation based. So if you were to go to my website, I have um, a video offering of so I'm trying, I'm working on um, right now. I've just added a new sound and like it's for Christmas. So you'll love it. I added it yesterday for everyone. So it's my gift to you. Um, and everything's donation based. So you can tune into Kundalini classes. I mean, it's not like super pro, like it's in my living room. So it's not like, you know, it's not like, don't expect like some high end studio. And like, uh -huh. I am like this when I teach. So, it's, you know, there's like, there's stuff going on, but it's fun. Um, but you can join, I teach Zoom classes um, three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I do a once monthly virtual global cacao ceremony, and that's pretty cool. The next one is going to be on January 3rd. Um, okay. I it's Usually I do it a little bit later, but this is going to be, it's like the Sunday after New Year's. So it's going to be, I think, um, 8 a.m. your time to 10 a.m. So you could kind of wake up, have the cacao, and be in the meditation. And it's a deep guided meditation. I use the bowls. I use like the rain stick and the ocean drum and take you on a guided journey. And I have to tell you, January 3rd was inspired by this course. I have the picture up that I used for my light warrior because I was like, oh, this is what I was feeling. I always kind of have a cup of cacao and get my, like, what's my theme? The last one was was intention, and this was like, uh-uh. It is time for everyone to step up and take their power back, and it is like, all right, we have, we're have we all doing all this work, I'm sure, for solstice and end of the year, and I'm like, it is time to drop our stories, to come together and step up and like get fiery in the navel, so it's going to be about that, and actually the ad for it is of that light warrior princess. Yes, yes. Well, I don't know. Okay, so Candace, I don't know if you heard this, but like, when I was talking to Shannon the other day, I just saw Joan Ocean had one of her recent dolphin swimming groups and the name of their pod was the Light Warrior Bubble Pod or something. <laughs> light Warrior Pod, no way, the Light Warrior coming out. So amazing. Okay, so for people who are wanting to do that ceremony with you, because I would love to do that. Like, so I, let's say I want to prepare my own cacao. Okay, yes. What tell talk to people who just have like a whole foods? What can we do? Okay, so like, if you want to, like, sorry, so anytime you want, go to my website. It's like you can, I, the first thing I would do, sign up for my newsletter. That's like the easiest, okay. fastest way. Once a week, I send it out, you get all the information. But there's a cacao page on in my website that okay. explains, and I send out to everyone when you sign up on Zoom. I send a mail about how to prepare it and everything, but okay. the, you know, okay. the, the general gist, if you're excited, you've asked. So basically if you're preparing ceremonial cacao, um, like, and, it, and it's a, and it's a paste, it's about one eighth to four or five, uh, tablespoons. But I mean, like, do you want me to be that specific about preparing it or well, so like you, so let's say you've got the paste. Yeah. What do you do with the paste? So you chop up the paste, like, so my bars, I sell, like, give them to people and I'm like, chop it up within 24 hours or it'll sit on your shelf for a year. Chop it up, airtight container. The actual measurements, and I still do European measurements, is 42 and a half grams to 250 milliliters of water. That's a shamanic dose. The daily dose is about half or two thirds of that, okay. and which ends up being a shamanic dose in what we would know in America would be like one and an eighth of a cup and five tablespoons. So the key part is when you're making ceremonial cacao, bring the water almost to a boil, don't let it boil. 
add your cacao, foam will rise, sit there and stir it and take the time. Everyone always says, my cacao is not as good as yours. I'm like, you just didn't work patient enough. So get your wooden spoon and turn on some good like shamanic music and, and sing to it, sing your favorite song to it and bring in the love and just stir it. And now I add cayenne because it gets into the bloodstream a bit faster. Um, uh -huh. non-dairy. So if you want to take like half water and half a coconut milk or almond milk, just don't add any dairy to it. And then you can spice it up. Like it's not a perfect science. Like, you know, I use cloves and nutmeg and just make it how you'd like. If you want to be like, I used to be pretty hardcore about it and be like, just water and cacao. But you know, you don't have to be, but you know, it's, it's up to you. You know, I, I kind of, like, I kind of like it now. I'm like, I'm a, I like it frothy and yummy. You know? I like a little sugar in there. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so then um, the ceremonial dose is double the amount. You never need to drink more than that because the only thing you're going to get is a stomach ache because it's quite bitter. Okay. Um, you know, you're not going to like go we'll go way deeper because you can only release so much serotonin and anandamide. Um, okay. But yeah, so that's like, you know, and, and it's on my, um, I didn't just email me like, oh, but I've got these great cards. If you're interested, I can email you that exactly how to do the daily dose and exactly how to do the shamanic dose. Happy to share that. And, you know, for those of you watching and in the chat, you'll see Candace's website, soulfiresocial.com. Um, so that's what she's talking about. Please, you know, check it out, sign up for her, um, her newsletter yeah. and then and then we can all be prepared for the ceremony, right? So we'll have yes. our cacao ready. Yes. And then we meet you on on Zoom. Is that how it works? Yeah. So, oh, yes. Okay. So you sign up. And when you register, um, like either from my website, I also, it's Soul Fire Social is my Facebook page as well. So you can go on there because all of my events are listed there. If you want to be like, if you want to make friends with me on Facebook on Soul Fire Social, then you'll see all the events come up. So that's probably a good idea too. Then you okay. don't always have to check the website. But I'll send out an email and with all of the instructions and like what I want you to be journaling. So I really like you to be prepared. Like this is going to be about taking your power back. So I'll send you some specific questions. I want you to be thinking about, I've got a video, how to prepare your sacred space, you know, like creating a wonderful area where you can be silent. You can bring your pictures, your crystals. Um, and a lot of empaths have actually, or actually come to me and said they prefer the globe virtual ceremony. I know a lot of people have been like, Oh, I don't want to do zoom. Um, and they want the music live, but a lot of empaths have found it better. And I know like Laura, um, uh, Peterson, <clears throat> I know she's, a, she's probably on here too. She's a very good friend. I don't think she'd mind me saying, but she was like surprised how much she enjoyed being in her own space. And then you can kind of really, you're not worried about what anyone else is doing. And right. I think you can't deny the power of like, we're doing it right now, connecting through the ethers. I know you're there. We're, you know, yeah. our energy, we're sharing energy. And so I send you the information, you log on and I'll tell you, I always have you drink about half of the cacao as you're journaling before we get started. And then we kind of come online together and we share our intentions. We uh, you know, re begin the ceremony and then I have you lie back and you really just go on a really beautiful journey. <laughs> See, and I, <laughs> well, and we're that we're really moving everything virtual anyway. So, you know, it's becoming where we're really not going to places. So doing it this way, I think is it's kind of the wave of the future. Um, is there anything else like that you want people to do for that ceremony? Like, should they be preparing their intentions for the year or um, you know, when you talk about stepping forward, I really think there's something going on where there's a call that's having that's been sent out like it's just reverberating everywhere this call that we're being asked to like step into action and step into our highest path right i i, I completely agree <clears throat> i mean it's like the veils are thin and i've never felt it so much actually even more so now that you've kind of helped me with like kind of really tapping into who i am and not being afraid of that either yeah. Um, but I think that, um, what, what, I don't know if, about, I think we're all seeing this where more and more people are kind of stepping out, not being afraid to talk about what they're doing, not being afraid to say, oh, I see this, or I've experienced this as a child and I want to tap back into it because my society pushed this down in me or, you know, people are waking up. Um, and also there are the people who are really, there's, I think there's a choice right now, Rainy, where we either start making the choices to elevate our vibration 
or you're, I think, I think people are going to really get left behind and be struggling if they don't take this opportunity to like do some work, like, but it's work, you know, it's work. It's not like we all met, we don't all magically elevate. Like you got to do some work. This is, this is a really good point that you bring up, Candace. And I just kind of want to reiterate that for anybody watching that, like, I mean, following your soul path, following what your gut says you're here to do is that is really your only path. Like everything else is distraction. So every second you spend doing anything else is just another moment. You're not on the path you're supposed to be on. Right? Like it's, I mean, it's the only path. And so if you're, if it's time to take that leap, if you have not taken the leap, you know, if you, and, right? I, I agree. But I also have to say, like, I think it's really funny when people are like, Oh, it's so, look, it's so easy. And you're like, Oh, oh, no. oh. No, it's not. and it doesn't, it's like, you know, I, I think it's telling people like, Hey, you know, like every day is a fascinating adventure, right? Um, yes. And yes, it is wonderful to be on this journey and finding from your soul tribe, but it is like a roller coaster ride, you know, and once you step up and hop on, it's a whole host of new, fascinating, worthwhile challenges, but it's not like, oh, all of a sudden enlightenment, you know, like this is right. not happening. And so I think that's <laughs> the one, the one thing is committing to this personal work is probably like, you know, the hard, the hard thing mentally is like getting over the financial stuff and being like, okay, I'm really, I'm going to commit to playing the gong. That's not the same paycheck, you know, <laughs> you know okay? but I think, I think what is yeah. surprising to me is just that every step opens another door. It's like, <clears throat> and in a good way, but it's, it's work. And I just feel like right now, and, and yes, when, with this, with this ceremony in particular, like, I think this from right now to the solstice, people need to be thinking about the experiences that they've had. They need to be, and particularly in the past year, but I think we need to drop those stories. My, this journey is not going to at all be about, let's talk about COVID or reiterate what yeah. happened. It's up till now. And I think into the solstice, if you have stuff to deal with, address it, you know, and I would highly recommend the Ho'opono, the Hawaiian prayer of redemption and forgiveness. Like it's time to, um, to whatever stories you have, address them and drop them. Because I think this is an opportunity out of this solstice into this new year. It's like, we've been cocooning. Let's come out of the light, but let's come out and be like, it's time, right? It's time. I better let's do it. <laughs> That's very serious, there. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> no, that was great. But it's true. I mean, I think, I think there's no more time. You know, there's days of like saying, "Oh, I'm going to stay in the third dimensional world because it feels safe." Like, I'm just not. I'm too scared to step in the fifth dimensional world. I'm too scared to take that leap. Like, there's no more room for that. You have to. That's what you came here to do, yeah. right? Absolutely. Like, and, and so when you stepped on, I just want to like get to that feeling of you when you stepped on your path. Like, you turned your back on all of that, those great years as a stockbroker, and you said, "I'm doing this path." Like, what did that feel like? What sensation did you have in your body at that time? And, you know, I think there were, I, okay. So what's amazing to me is how easy it was. You'll be surprised by this, how easy it was to say, this is the only option. What mm -hmm. was difficult was explaining it to the world and mm -hmm. figuring out how to live that, how, what that really meant just in day-to-day -day life. But it was like, there was a day, it was like, I love what I do. I love the money. Like, Hey, I loved it. Yeah. Um, but it no longer became, I couldn't, I, I couldn't read another research report. Like I couldn't, it was like, there was this whole world. I had to be a part of it. And yeah. so that was amazing. That was just like, I am following my truth. Rainy, there was no option. And it was simply my biggest, I would say the biggest thing that I've had, and I've just even recently kind of been going through it is as I step even further into that role, my, my biggest fear and the hardest thing has been losing people. Like, will I lose people oh. in my life? Um, friends who I have adored, who've known me, but like, 
you know, like there's a point of like, I kind of feel like now I'm stepping, like I'm going full woo woo. You know? like, woo! There we go. It's like, I, and, and it's hard. It's, I, I have to say, I have shed a lot of tears in even recently because I think I've just really made those final steps. And I know right now there's no more toe. I don't have the toe still in the other pond anymore. It's like, I'm all in. And, um, as I say that I get chills, like, um, it's scary because I really love, I, you know, I just, I have some people in my life that I just love. And I'm hoping that as my vibration rises, that we can still, you know, and the things that I do that we can still find common ground, even if our lives are different. Um, but I think I have to be prepared that that's not going to be the case with everyone. But then I'm so honored that I have, I have another wonderful soul family too. So I'm trying to find that balance. I think that's, um, that's probably the only hard thing that, that's a struggle. Well, look, tell me about this, Candace, because one thing I'm finding is like the people in my life who I thought would be most freaked out, you know what I mean? Who I thought would be like, oh my God, lock her up. Those are the people who come forward and are like, I'm channeling a council. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, yeah, we've been in our family for, you know, 40 plus years together and I'm just now finding this out. So it's like, Coming forward is such an opening for other people, you know, and and it's like you know, people out there who may be watching this and are thinking like, I'm feeling that call. I know there's a path for me, but I'm worried about what people are going to think. And it's like, no, there's people out there who are looking to you to make that step, right? And you're right. I mean, and you are right because it's you know, you're going to shake people up as you start to, but, but you're, you're right. So many people are waiting to be like, Oh, it's okay for me to tell you this. Like the yeah. amount of times it's like, Oh wait, okay. You're giving me an opportunity to be me and to tap in and to experience and express. And I think that's just, again, that, that round table, we just need to be there for each other. And, um, you know, I think it's like any chosen path. It's just finding your finding your way, finding your support system, and being really true to yourself because that's kind of that's all we got. It's like you're on your deathbed. You look back at your life. What do you want? You want to have been true to yourself. Absolutely. Yeah, those are perfect words, Candice. And I really, you know, I appreciate all of your wisdom and your bright, beautiful radiance and your honesty, like giving it to us real life. <laughs> and people out there who are like, man, I don't want to leave my third dimensional job, but I feel like I'm supposed to be like rubbing oil on people or whatever, you know, <laughs> doing my computer writing books about water, who knows? But, you know, for, for those of you out there on the fence, like the call has been sounded. It's been like a galactic universal, some call has been sounded and there's no more hiding. It's time. It's We're being time. Up, up, up. So thank you. Oh. Thank you so much, Candace. And for all of you out there who want to take part in Candace's cacao ceremony, um, January 3rd, sign up for her email list. You'll get reminders of it. I can't yeah. wait. It's going to be really powerful. It's bringing the new year with some sound healing and plant medicine. Fantastic. Oh, absolutely. I would, I would love it. And if you have any questions, like really, like, and I mean it, just email me. Like I, I'm happy to answer um, I don't know if like, you know, just even about making cacao, anything like that, yeah. just, just feel free and feel free to pop on, just test out a yoga class, you know, come join us one day. Um, and as I said, there's a holiday sound healing. So put your headphones on. And if you get a little stressed out and from your 3D world. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for everything you're offering, Candice. It's so wonderful to connect with you. Please come visit Sedona again soon. I will definitely be there in, in sometime in May or June. Yes, I love it. All right. Signing out, everyone. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Candice. Have an amazing day. Thank you.